Here you see that over the past 721 days, SCHD has been beaten in total return by the S&P 500, JEPI, an ETF named COWS, which I'll tell you what that's all about, and another ETF I'm going to tell you about, which is SFAL. Notice that during this time frame, SCHD has returned a negative 2.72%, whereas the ETF I'm going to talk about in this video, SFAL, has returned 12.97%. What is this COWS ETF that's beat SCHD, and even more so, what is SFAL, and is it something you should consider investing in? Now please understand that just because I'm talking about SFAL and COWS as well as a couple of ETFs, these are not my recommendations. I simply want you to understand what these ETFs are and how they might fit into your portfolio. But first, let's review the most recent history. The reason why I went back to May 13th of 2021, as you see here, that's when SVOL was started. And it's actually the youngest of the five ETFs you see here. Now undoubtedly most of you are familiar with SCHD, more likely you're also familiar with JEPI. If not, I'll share a video in the description below where I compared these two ETFs side by side. And most of you are also probably familiar with the S&P 500 or SPIDER, ticker symbol SPY. So the two that may be newer to you is the COWS ETF and SBAL. Now before I go into detail about those two ETFs, let's just review the performance of these five ETFs over the past 721 days. Now one thing that surprised me is this orange line which represents SCHD over the past 721 days. Notice that during that time frame, SCHD has consistently traded on the lower portion of the returns for these five ETFs. Just above that was the S&P 500 or SPIDER. Next best has been the COWS, which as you see up here is the Cash COWS 100 ETF. When I read that, that sounded interesting to me. And I'll get into what Cash COWS is in just a minute, but notice that Cash COWS has ended up in third position here at 8.35%. And then JEPI, which is a premium income ETF, is in second position at 10.43%. And finally, the SVOL, the one I'm really going to focus on in depth in this video, is just under 13%. So SVOL has beaten SCHD by 15.69% in total return. Now, I also want to point out to you price return. Because when it comes to price return, SVOL is actually the worst performing of all five of these ETFs. But what's interesting, notice that of these five, SCHD over this time frame again was in the lower portion of returns during most of this time frame, and ended up in fourth position of these five ETFs during the past 721 days. Another important factor to consider is that SVOL has actually lost 14.49% when it comes to only price return during the past 721 days. But again, when you're looking at total return, it's dominated. Before we leave this screen, I want to share one more important piece of information with you, and that's expense ratio. Notice here that SCHD's expense ratio is only 0.06%. Next highest is SPY. And then the two highest are the two that we're going to talk about a little more in detail in this video, and that's COWS is at 0.49% and SVOL is at 0.66%. The reason these expense ratios are higher is because they're more actively managed ETFs. Now, if you like what you see here, I just wanna give you a heads up that this is Seeking Alpha's trading platform. They've agreed to give my viewers and patrons a substantial discount. So if you'd like to check the platform out, the link will be down in the description below. So first, let's dive into what COWS is. If we focus here on COWS on the Seeking Alpha website and scroll down here to the fund portfolio, we see that COWS focus on growth and value stocks and companies across a diversified market capitalization. They like to focus on companies that have high free cash flow, which are also known as cash cows, hence its name. Now, I don't know about you, but I like investing in companies that throw off a lot of cash. So what kind of companies are included in cows holdings? Well, here we see that energy makes up a huge percentage of it at just over a third at 34%. Healthcare is 18%, basic materials 13%, and on down we see technology is at 7.8% and consumer defensive is just over 2% and real estate a very small percent at less than 1%. Now compared to the other ETFs that I shared earlier, except for the S&P 500, Cal's dividend is fairly low at only 2.12%. However, as we can see here in the dividend growth section, it's grown its dividend from 56 cents per share back in 2017 to 90 cents per share in 2022. Here we see that it's top 10 holdings make up 21% of its overall portfolio and it includes 103 holdings. Some of Cal's top 10 holdings 
might be familiar to you, such as Gillette Sciences, Bristol Myers Squibb, Occidental Petroleum, and Chevron, whereas others may not be as familiar to you, such as Booking Holdings. Or keep in mind that it's dominated by energy and healthcare. These are simply companies that generate a lot of free cash flow. That's what this ETF likes to focus on. So if you want to invest in companies that generate a lot of free cash flow, this might be an ETF that you want to consider. Now let's dive into this new high yield ETF SVOL. Let me tell you some of the things I like and some of the things I don't like about this ETF. So you can decide for yourself if it's one that you might want to have a piece of your portfolio in. Now the first thing that people really like about SVOL is its high dividend. Notice here that it's currently paying a 17.99% monthly dividend. That means for each share of S vol you own, which is currently trading at $21.78 per share, it's paying you 32 cents. I mean, this thing has really thrown off a lot of cash since it started 721 days ago. In order to help you understand what S vol is, let me tell you a little bit about volatility and more specifically, let's talk through the VIX, ticker symbol VIX. Here you see a weekly chart of the VIX. When a lot of fear enters the market, like it did back when COVID first started in 2020, volatility and fear spike. Here you see that when COVID started back in early March of 2020, VIX went up 150% in just a few months. And this is important to understand because of how SVOL generates this high yield. They like to sell nearer term call options out of the money, but still close enough to where volatility is trading at to generate nice premiums and to protect themselves against some major spike like we saw back in March to 2020, they'll buy farther out of the money call options to cap their losses. They also don't invest 100% of their capital at any one point in time in volatility. And this is important because when there's a spike in volatility, these call options that are close to the money, they can really go against you in a big way. But I like that they're buying protection farther out of the money so it caps how much they will lose during the next volatility spike. Here you see here on SVOL's website that they are the first ever VIX income generating strategy they also hedge their positions. So the focus is to generate as much cash as possible by selling volatility, but protect their losses by buying protection. Although I would be comfortable putting some of my money into this ETF, I wouldn't put a lot of it in there, at least not yet. You see, part of the problem with SVOL is that it's so new. It's only 721 days old. But I will say that the total returns it's generated are pretty impressive. And the fact that it's beaten all four of those other ETFs, some of them very highly touted ETFs here on YouTube and on TikTok and other social media platforms, well, it piqued my interest enough that I wanted to dig in and see what it was all about. Now, there is a very important weakness that I think you need to understand. Here you see a chart of SVOL in the black candlesticks and the VIX, ticker for some of VIX, in the orange line. I want to show you something very important that you need to know about SVOL before you think about investing in it. Notice that every time the VIX, which is volatility or fear, spikes in the market, SVOL seems to make a pretty strong low. Now I'm okay with that. I'm used to stocks going up and down like most of you probably are. But what I don't like about it is that over the past couple of years, so every time there's a spike, it seems that SVOL makes a new lower low that it's not able to recover from. Here recently, we see that volatility spiked back in March 10th of 2023. And again, we see that SVOL dropped almost immediately. Now I've switched over to the weekly chart of SVOL. And here it's more noticeable. We see that over the past couple of years, it made lower lows. And it did that until very recent when the low from March of 2023 was actually a little bit higher than low from back in October. But the problem is we still don't see that we've made a higher high on this chart. So is this going to be a continual problem for SVOL? Well, at this point, it looks like it will be, but only time will tell how it plays out. But right now we see that every time there's a spike in volatility, SVOL seems to be inclined to make a new lower low. But what helps make up for that is doing so much option premium that so far, even though the stock has declined quite a bit over the past couple of years, it's actually been able to beat the S&P 500, beat Jeppy, beat cows, and even beat SCHD in total return. So how would I choose to use SVOL if I decide to invest in it? And I'll tell you up to this point, I haven't invested any money in it, although I'm almost to the point where I feel comfortable doing it. But if I do invest in it, it's gonna be in a very small position, just so I can track it as an owner. But one thing you wanna keep in mind about SVOL is it's generating so much income that you have to pay taxes on that income. One nice thing about SCHD is that it's known to grow its dividends really fast. However, right now, SCHD is only paying a 3.78% dividend, and that's compared to SVOL's 17.99% dividend. So although you will pay taxes on this income, SVOL is generating so much income that it might make up for those taxes. Now keep in mind, you could always hold it in a retirement account, in which case you wouldn't have to worry about taxes. And that's one way that I might plan to buy a little bit of it. Now looking at SVOL's dividends over the past couple of years, we see that it's consistently paid a nice dividend. Here we see it start up by paying a 26 cent dividend, 
And it's fluctuated from 40 cents down to around a low of 30 cents over the past couple of years. So it's consistently paying that nice high dividend. The question is, with the ETF losing value every time there's a new low, will it be able to maintain that dividend? Well, only time will tell. But if you were holding this in a tax-free account, you can always use those dividends to buy more of it, especially when there was a volatility spike because you know that SVOL is going to drop in price. So I know that I'd be willing to own a little bit of this in a retirement account. Well, I didn't have to worry about being taxed on all these dividends, but I might also be willing to own it in a taxable account and just let it keep buying itself, especially when it had a big drop in price. Please understand this is not a recommendation for you to buy this. This is a highly volatile ETF that is still in use. So if you decide to invest in it, please be very careful with it and know what you're investing before you put your hard-earned money into it. We generate hundreds of thousands of dollars every year by selling options. For example, here you see a trade we did in Texas Instrument where we did what's called a bullish put credit spread. We pocketed $2.49 per share for selling these options. If you'd like to get an alert as soon as we buy and sell stocks or options, please check out the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. If you'd like to see some of my favorite tips and tricks that you can use to retire early, check out the video series at the link below entitled How to Retire Early. Until next time, happy investing, and we'll see you again soon.